okay hey hello youtube it is uh beginner boost week seven actually so this looks like it's got a wrong thing in it let's go fix that right now this is left over from last week let's go change this to week seven we're week seven and this is what we're trying to cover today we only have the two hours um but we are going to try to cover um most of the stuff about editing files from the command line at least we're going to do the overviews and stuff we're not going to go do the other things we're just going to go through what is what is here and um go with all of that so a couple things a couple things we need to cover first of all so um this day is not about arguing about editors i'm going to be very opinionated about a few things but if you are in the chat or you're in the comments section you know try to keep it respectful you know using a terminal editor is one of the things people get really religious and dogmatic about and they call each other horrible names depending on what editor they use uh it's going to be very very rough day so <laughs> i want people to make their cases for the arguments about which ways to use it i'm going to make my case about why i think you should learn it this way uh i am going to state certain things you can do with editors that i think are absolutely idiotic if you do that thing i'm not calling you an idiot right i'm calling the thing that you're doing idiotic you can do the math if you want to but that doesn't mean you're necessarily an idiot people have said the same thing about my stuff too so i'm just going to put that out there um before we get going i do want to show that we've got a new um uh, we do have a new container so uh that we're going to be using for go programming some other stuff it's a little bit bigger so it'll probably take longer to download two gigabytes instead of one i know uh but it's trying to be you know like a linux version so this is just a reminder of how to get it if you've already got um if you've already got the container on your system you can just do git pull at ghcr.io slash rbxrob slash ws.skillstack and that will pull the latest uh, skillstack image down to your local machine uh, and it will take a little bit of time because it's it's bigger than the other one if you want to go actually look at it on github you can go to github.com slash rwxrob slash ws dash skill stack and this is the repo that goes with it if there's anything wrong with it uh you see any problems with it you know go ahead and submit an issue you can click on issues here and you can actually open an issue on it uh i have been opening and closing issues a lot to, to remind myself to add things to it if you want to see what i've done to change it up since the last time you can see uh the things i've added i've added for example uh the pomo timer if you want to have that one of those little um if you want to have one of these little tomato timers up in the corner of your tmux that is now built in uh, there's a bunch of other th you know things that stuff that you may or may not like but if you want to know what like the biggest one is that we added go 1.20 support uh including all of the um uh language server support which comes from something called vimgo and that's been all added i also added regex so you can practice your regular expressions from the command line uh, we will practice using that after we learned Tmux. We haven't learned Tmux yet. That's not coming until next week, maybe the week after that. Um, we've added some other tools, password generator. Uh, I added some other uh, supports for, you know, banner and some, some text-based, um, things. Um, so for example, like you can do, let's see here, you know, like, uh, banner or something, you know, uh, if you want to put some 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 text, uh, rotate text. I mean, you know, little things. But more importantly is the is the Go development stuff. And uh, I, had, I did the info command that was not there before. So if you wanted to look up information from Bash, that's going to be. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, if you want to just look up general information, that's we talked about this before. So there's man, there's info, and there's uh, help. Those are the three main commands to figure out what to do from the command line without going out to the internet and searching it. Uh, we added, I added color strip, which is a way that we're going to get into colors later. We haven't done that. Uh, added the time zone to the bash RC. So you should be getting the New York time zone. Uh, if you don't like that, you can go in there and change it. But otherwise this, the time zone of that's in the skill stack thing will always be the time zone of the beginner boost in my time zone. Uh, if you don't like that, you can actually research how to change that. Um, 
uh, strip us escape, which is going to, we're going to use this later when we get into terminal escape sequences, which we haven't done yet. And um, I actually fixed uh, the the Z tool that you guys have probably seen me use before. So we're not necessarily going to go through this, but, um, you know, this is my, my Zettel casting tool. Um, if you want to jump ahead and actually understand how it works, you can type Z help. And this will, you can kind of learn it from here and follow the getting started guide. Uh, I'm not going to be covering that until the boost, if, if possibly at the end of the boost, if we're going to do it at all. Um, just a reminder, we have a lot to cover. We, this is the summary of it. This is now on, on the website. So if you go to skillstack.io, just a reminder, if you go to skillstack.io uh, and click on boost, you can see a breakdown of the time. Uh, here we go, beginner boost. And you click on 2003 overview. And then this is, I'm trying to update and maintain a, a, you know, an estimate of how much that we have. And this is kind of just rough notes. So as you know, the boost is very casual. So we will be, we're about here. We're not going to do anything more with regular expressions until we learn Tmux, but uh, until we start coding, I realized that we kind of rushed for regular expressions last week. You could write in, there are entire books written on regular expressions. So I, I, it bothers me, but we cannot break down everything there is to do with regular. If, fact of the matter is, is you really don't need them until you need them, right? And then you're going to be like, well, how do I match blah? So you just needed to know about that. So you can go look about it. Uh, and, and, you know, you, we, we, you can go to golf if you just want to learn regular expressions, just cause uh, most of the time, regular expressions are going to come or become valuable as we start editing text. And that's why I wanted to jump into that today. So today is going to be editing text in place from the command line editing text files visually in the terminal editors. We're going to start doing that. We're not going to finish today. Obviously we got a lot of editors to cover, uh, but we are going to introduce the idea of terminal editors as well as in place file editing. Uh, and that should be it for today. That's three hours of stuff in two hours. We'll see if we can do that. Uh, we're not going to do man process management. That's next week or so. All right. So, so hopefully our, our container will have downloaded by now. Um, so there we go. So now we have uh, the new the new container. Now to run your container, you probably know this already. It, when you do that, by the way, that will throw away uh, the other image. It, the uh, container that you created, though, um, is probably still there, your old one, right? So if you do podman uh, ps-8, you'll see all of your old containers, right? So to start a new container, uh, you can do you can cut and paste the command uh, as it is covered in the quick start. You can, act, the only thing you needed to do today was to do the update, right? To do the pull to get the latest. But this command is the same, right? It says boost here, right? So you can, you can copy that and you can paste it. And if you try boost, it'll be like, no, can't do it because there's already a boost, right? So you can either delete the boost, the previous container and get rid of it if you don't want it around anymore, which is, uh, oops, RM right rm space boost right that will delete the other container so you can then do that command again or if you want to keep that container around uh you could do boost two or change the name or something like that it doesn't matter right and then you'll have two of them around you just have to remember that every time you want to come back to that container you got to remember the name right so you won't have as many old containers as i have but uh you, you may want to uh, may want to just take note of that so so, so there I'm running now, but if I exit and I want to go run into that new container again, so the old one, you might forget, right? Start dash a boost two. So now I've given it a different name, right? Now, uh, I am going to remove both of those containers because I don't need them. So I'm going to do RM boost and, uh, and I'm going to RM boost two. And I'm going to try the command again. We put the arrow up arrows and go back to here. And I'm going to change the name back to boost so that the only container I have is the boost one. So podman start dash a to attach and then boost. Okay. Oops. Got to, got to type the right. Oh, wait, I, I, I was already in it. Ha. Huh. All right. So here we go. Podman start dash a boost. All right. So you should be good to go and, and start on the next stuff now, right? Uh, and let's do the next thing, the next big thing. See to clear the screen or clear if you want. 
Uh, so you should have, you know, a user at skill set. You have a brand new container. And it, the way you can test it, by the way, is if you do Go version, it should show you got Go version 1.20 there. Um, if you do date, uh, the command should show you that you're in Eastern time zone, right? So 11.11 Eastern time zone, right? So that stuff was not working before. Uh, you want something a little bit more fun, you can do color strip, uh, which is, uh, as you can see, the colors. You see this? This is using millions of colors. You see how there's like no there's no gradient line change very much between these colors. That's because um, this has been properly configured for the terminal. Uh, and that's a lot of stuff that you would have to tweak yourself if you were building up your own your own uh, Linux ter terminal container, which we do not cover in the boost. We do not cover how to make your own Linux distribution. We just they're covering how to use the terminal effectively. Um, and how to get a terminal in the quickest way possible and for the, for this particular usage which is you know getting a getting downloading this container and and running it um i, I did want to just put, put a plug in really quickly uh since you guys are watching um if you just want to put some 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 white noise on in the background uh i have been streaming my co-working uh really deep level stuff my actual day job doing uh kubernetes k log and coding and go and and setting up oidc and, and and authentication and my home lab and all this stuff so there's a lot going on during the week right in fact we've had a lot and i'm playing witcher <laughs> i've been playing witcher and i've been biking and stuff so if you want to come by you know go ahead and, and do the like and subscribe thing on youtube or, or the twitch thing and but if you just want to put me on uh and I'm, i usually just talk through the stuff i don't always do that because i can't always talk about what i'm doing at work but if you want to come kind of just hobnob with you know us while we do our day jobs you can come on over and 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 do that um i, I mean as a beginner you're going to be really lost but some of it might give you um some context uh about the other stuff so that, that's all i'm going to say about that let's get on to the main event so so we are now uh let's go ahead and close this one so that's how you run the latest version of skill set right so by the way if you're ever if you see an update if you I, I would really appreciate if you go out to the ws to the to the image here if you go out to this to this image or to this ws uh if you go out to the ws.skill stack thing here uh you can go over here and you can actually follow you can start the image right you can start the image and you can follow it. So if there's any updates to the image or if there's any changes to it, uh, you can be notified of that. So you can know to go get the latest um, or you can just do poll, right? And that will always get the latest if there's a new one. If there, if there is not a new one, um, then you'll, you know, it just won't do anything. So, so here you go. We have one package here and yeah so and they're using the docker command but you're using podman uh haven't had that many downloads people are doing other things but uh but for those who are using it hopefully it will be useful for them all right here we go back to the normal thing uh how do i sort lines of output so there are a couple of commands that are hey so there are a couple of commands that do not relate to editing that we didn't get to that we need to cover Okay, so one of those commands is sort. So what is sort? So let's let's go ahead and, and look at the Etsy password file, which is uh, a file like we've looked at before, right? Let's say we wanted to sort this file by name, right? So as you can see, it's got files in all sorts of different order. There's a command called sort, man sort, will show you how you can sort. Now you can sort by case you can sort by field you can decide to separate each fields that you're sorting by uh based on uh, a specific keyword or a specific uh you know separator As a matter of fact where is the separator command is probably worth looking at um let's see stable output merge unique there we go and you can also combine it with dash u which will we're also going to look at another thing called unique um, but this is the command for sorting. So you're going to want to learn about this. And, uh, so if we do sort Etsy password, we get the same exact file. And do you remember how to make it? So it doesn't go off the screen. You guys remember how we didn't need to that fit on the screen, right? But if it didn't fit on your screen, how would you do that? Do you remember? 
So pipe to more or pipe to less. In my case, more is less. Uh, so there we go. So that is, that is it. So that put, this is called a lexical sort. So a lexical sort, let's talk about lexical sorting for a bit. Lexical sorting puts, uh, is based on um, ASCII sort of. So characters that are not numbers come first, then come numbers then come letters, right? And if, I believe that lowercase comes before uppercase, right? So they're not, they're this important. So when you're doing a search and you wanna understand sorting, remember this term, remember lexical sorting, right? So what is lexical sorting? You can do that, type a question mark, space, what is lexical sorting, enter. And then you can, keep, I'm pushing the J, J, J to go down. What is lexical, lexica, lexicographical order? Nobody can say that. It's too hard to say. <laughs> so, and then you have Wikipedia. The lexicographic order is one way of formalizing word order given in the order of underlying symbols. The formal notation starts with a finite set A, often called the alphabet, which is totally ordered. That is for two, that is for two. God, this is complex. Let's go ahead and read it. Um, okay, if you just want to scroll down the window, uh, hold con, uh, control N. And control uh, P, control N and control P. Okay, uh, for Wikipedia free, blah, 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 I keep going down here. Lexicon. Okay, the words are blah blah blah. I mean, the best way to do this is probably just play around with it. So let's actually play around with it. To get out of the search, you type Q. Okay, so. Uh, your first two results are switched. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I, it depends on what system you're using. Are you using my same image? Uh, a and B are switched. That would be weird. It might be because they didn't draw properly on the screen. But let's actually make a file, okay? So like we did yesterday, um, we're going to go ahead and echo uh, or printf. Let's printf. We did this last week. We're going to printf a bunch of line returns and stuff to the screen. So let's do, let's just try it. Let's like, one, uh, two, well, let's put them out of order, shall we? Four, three, whoops. And we, we don't know how to edit files yet, so that's why we're doing it this way. And five, let's do, let's add an underscore, uh, let's add a dash, let's add a star, how about that? uh let's add you know like letter a a and how about q and then we'll add a capital q and let's add a uh i don't know that's on about a dot so let's say all those files let's say what those look like let's write those to temp foo and you should know how to do all that. We covered that in previous weeks. Now we can cat uh, temp foo, right? You guys remember TAC? You remember TAC? We covered it really quickly. TAC is the opposite of cat. So it gives you that line first. We, obviously, we made it, it looks like we made a mistake with the dot, didn't we? What did we do wrong? Why is it going dot Q? I don't get it. Oh, because there's no line return there. All right, let's put the line return at the end. Uh, yeah, the results from DuckDuckGo are going to be out of order. That's that's not that's that depends on the internet, or or DuckDuckGo specifically. So cat temp foo, uh, and then we could tack camp foo. So cat gives it an order. Tack is the reverse order. A you know, last for last line first. Um, as you can see, there is no sorting going on, right? So sort temp foo. And we see there's what we what I was talking about, right? So, so we have the symbols first. Uh, now this is an interesting one, though. It's important for you to see this. An underscore, and I actually I put it in there on purpose. An underscore in Linux and Unix is considered a letter. I know, weird, huh? It's very weird. Underscore is considered a letter. In fact, it's the first letter. That's why it's before A. So, and the reason for that is so that when, I don't know who decided this years ago, but 
but when you have like a name like something underscore something that that would would be you know would pass an alphabetical uh test as if it was you know it's an alphabet thing and maybe it's just because it's a spacer or something who knows i don't know why in fact and you know if you look at the c coding which is the first uh, unix computer programming language besides assembly uh you know it has a lot of underscores in it and their identifiers probably had underscores and so they some sometime early on they probably said okay underscores got to be treated as a letter every place we are doing things and that includes regular expressions like we talked about last week uh pearl-based regular expressions when you match a letter they're a class you know a class for letters or alpha uh, it will match that. It will match that. Now, and, and it, we didn't do uh, too much filtering last time. We did a little bit. We're gonna do more. Uh, we're gonna do more coming up in just a bit. But um, I think we did do a little bit of set and grep filtering. Uh, but let's actually try one of those. We we didn't cover classes, so let's let's cover grep really quickly. So let's grep. Um, let's grep a. You guys remember this right out of temp foo it's a little bit of a review of last week but still now let's grab q and it doesn't grip on both right so we have to add a class or a set so a set is you know got the brackets around it and we're using grep dash e by default why because of posix versus uh, regex versus basic we talked about that at length last week um and actually, if we wanted to, we could put in X, this here and say, I don't want any of the AQs. I want everything else, right? Um, also, did you notice the, 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 that it, it, the capital Q is still counted? Something interesting is if you add I to reg to grep, it'll actually discount case. It'll actually, only for ASCII, by the way, only for ASCII. So if you're searching in Chinese characters or something, the dash I is not going to fix it. But if it's ASCII, which means it's, you know, basically English Romanized letters, um, then it will, you can do that. You can have it be case insensitive. It's going to come back later. So, but what I was getting at is this, was, wouldn't it be nice if there was like a, a keyword we could use that represented all letters, right? So we want to get all the letters out of here. And that there actually is, and it's called, these are, these are actually from the POSIX standard. Uh, if I can remember how to do it. So, the class itself has to be encapsulated like this. Uh, there we go. So this, these are called classes. And if you do man grep, you should be able to see the regular expression classes. You can go look them up. We're not going to cover. There's so many of these things to cover. We can't cover them all, but I've showed you one of them. One of them is alpha. Uh, and I kind of obsess about these classes. Um, you know, here's, here's, again, here's a very refresher about how to do regular expressions, you know, exactly one of something, one or more. We covered, we covered that sort of last week. So you can go back and review. How did I get that? Man grep, man grep, and you can go read it. Okay. So I'm just giving you enough examples for you to go work on it. Normally I'll work through these activities with you, but if we sat here and did every single one of these, we would be here all day. Uh, so we can't do that. there there's another summary by the way of basic versus regular expressions man grep is your friend okay um anyway so we grepped out one of the classes one of the posix classes if you don't know what those are you want to do more research on them here's something you can go search for well, let me help you do a search from the command line question mark okay and then search for uh posix uh regex classes okay you can search for that and then you push the push J to go down. Regular expressions, POSIX basic regular expressions. That's not quite it. Let's go like here. Here we go. Regular expression is this. Let's keep going down, pushing the J. Um, regular expressions, pocket POSIX extended regular expressions. Uh, here we go. Regular expressions classes. Okay, so let's read about POSIX regular expressions, syntax, and examples. Let's go here. So let's follow this one. How do I follow it? I push L to go right. And we push L. We're going to follow that. Oh, there's nothing there because it's JavaScript. That's all the IBM documentation is shit because it requires JavaScript when it's just documentation, which is really stupid. Oh, hey, we got we got lucky. There we go. So Pete Freitag's cheat sheet 
so I push to go back up. By the way, I push K to go up, K to go up, and I'm going to push L on this to follow it. And there you go. There's all the classes and meanings, so you can take a picture of that if you want to. Um, but you see here we have alpha, and then we have alpha num. You see this here? Now, what I think is interesting is that I actually think this might be wrong. So let's, let's do a little test. As I said about the underscore, which led us down this rabbit hole, some, some Perl considers an alphanumeric character, it considers underscore to be an alphanumeric character. I think this is wrong. Let's go find out. Let's go find out, shall we? So if I change it to do alphanum, right? Oops, I can't go out of here. How can we go out of here? Uh, I tell you what, I'll go. You can stay on yours. I'm going to go out. So we can find it again. It's not that hard. All right. So if we had Tmux running, then you'd be able to do that. But I haven't shot. I haven't shown you how to do Tmux yet. All right. So let's do this. Instead of alpha, let's do alpha num. Uh oh, invalid class. It's is it alnum? It's alnum. Oh, look at that. It doesn't include underscore. Wow. Just for fun, I have to test something really quick right now. I'm going to do Perl. I'm going to try some Perl. Uh, yep, look at that. Wow, I learned something today. I learned something today. I learned that Perl has tainted my knowledge of the Alnum class. Can you see why? So if you were paying attention last week, uh, grep-p activates Perl regular expressions, right? Actually, I want to see if the Perl regular expression class observes the POSIX. What, what, what we're trying to say here is that the, the POSIX, oh wow, this is super interesting. Okay, so even veterans out there are probably wowing. Yeah, there's somebody going, wow. Um, so... This particular format with the brackets and the colons to indicate a class is POSIX compliant. That's been around since forever, right? As if, as we learned last week, PCRE, Perl compatible regular expressions kind of took over the world. And, and by doing dash capital P, you're enabling Perl. We're going to do a little Perl today, actually. And, um, and one and Perl, one of the things that Perl added was these really awesome shortcuts which are only available to Perl compatible regular expressions. And one of the shortcuts is slash W, right? Uh, slash W means uh, an ASCII word character. And according to Perl, that means all the alpha num set and underscore. And so I told you wrong earlier when I said that underscore. Now, the, the funny thing is though, is that when you do a sort, it appears that sort thinks it's the letter too doesn't it <laughs> which i find fascinating this is super interesting so no it does not w does not equal alnum no i know yeah and that that i knew i will no actually no i that i th i thought it was the same obviously and the the reason for it is because sort treats the underscore like a letter look at it it treats it as the first letter Something interesting too here is that capital letters are treated before the lowercase letters. Yeah, and, and these punctuation and special characters usually come first. So this all started because we were looking for lexicographical order. The reason I'm spending time on lexicographical order, right, is because when you ls something in a directory, right, uh, bin for example, when you ls something, the order is automatically lexicographical order unless you've changed it, right? So if you want to make sure that certain things come at the top, if by the way, if you do dash one on ls, it'll make them all in one line, right? So this is already pre-sorted for you in lexicographical order. And by the way, this, this right here is not a mistake. That is actually the name of a program. That left bracket is the name of a program. And we'll talk about that when we get into coding. It's kind of interesting. Um, and so, so that is lexicographical order use for use of LS. So sort temp foo. And you see that the sorting is not working. But but we had a kind of an interesting little uh, 
revelation with regard to Pearl. So, uh, so I'm, I'm kind of glad that I looked into that. So, so out the Al num POSIX class is not the same as backslash W Pearl class. Uh, and there you go. We've got it. Now we could, if you wanted to be more precise with that, if you didn't want to have the risk, uh, you could, you know, you could always, of course, just make it right. And you could say, I want zero through nine and I want, uh, a through Z. Uh oh, what happened to our capitals? Well, let's add those in there too. A through Z, right? Oops, sorry. Capital A through Z. There you go. Now you get everything right. And the interesting thing with that is that the, uh, that the capital came afterwards that time. Yeah, that is, this is some fun stuff. I'm enjoying this. Why did they come first that time? Is it because of the order of the range that I just did it? I should not have affected it. That is very interesting. Let's try this. Let's try, oh, this pro compatible. So let's do this. Okay, no, no, no. The queue is still last. Okay, so, oh, wait, never mind. Never mind. I, 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 I must have, earlier I must have said it wrong. So the, the capital is coming last. Yeah, the capitals come. I don't know why. Did I say capitals come first? The capitals always come last. I don't know why I said that. Yeah, of course they do. Capitals are always last. So, um, so, so yeah, so, we, so this is what we expect. If we wanted to do what Perl does, we would put an underscore there, right? And now, now we have exactly what Perl does. That is exactly what the POSIX does. I'll num. Oops. When you do that, you have to put it in brackets again, which I never remember to do. And if, yeah. Okay. So, so there we go. Um, all that is to show is that that's a sorting tool, right? Well, let's, let's get interesting on this. Let's, uh, let's actually add some stuff to it, right? So what's in our file right now, right now we've got all that stuff. Let's add some redundancy to it, right? So let's add an extra five and an extra lowercase a, right? So we're going to print F, uh, we're going to put another five and a line return, and we'll put another, an A, whoops, an A and a line return. And we're going to append two, two angle brackets. Don't do one or you'll blow it away. We're going to do two angle brackets and we're going to do that to temp foo. And that's going to write a five and an A and two line returns to, to the end of foo. Okay. So now when we cat temp foo, just to verify it, uh, we see that, in fact, we see the five and the A. Now, now we have those in there, right? So how can we make it so that it's just the stuff that we want to see in there, right? How can we make it so it's just the stuff that we want to see? Uh, in A is 97, yes. Um, somebody's looking up the ASCII code. It's good for you. So um, how do we make it so that the five and the A only appear once? right well there's another command called unique so man unique and we see re report repeat or omit repeated lines right now the important part here is let's read it report or omit repeated lines repeated lines <laughs> all right so so let's let's actually have fun with this let's play around with it yeah it's more fun to experiment with it let's try it so let's say unique slash temp foo. Oh, hey, look at that. It's got two fives in there. It didn't work, Mr. Rob. What the hell? So I'm going to show you an idiom you're going to see all the time. You're going to use it constantly. In order for those lines to be removed, they have to be combined together. And there's probably a uh you know an argument to unique that i don't know that i never use because i'm so used to doing what i'm about to show you so the way to actually get the unique lines is to first sort them so we do sort slash temp temp foo right and now the fives are next to each other and the a's are next to each other now you might say mr rob i saw that there's a dash u argument to this yeah okay I'm not sure the dash U is POSIX compliant, which means I'm not sure that that will work for you on an AIX machine or Alpine or anything that's not Linuxy, right? And frankly, I don't do that. This is what I've, I've been trained to do through my whole life. 
I pipe that to unique and it produces the same, the same result, right? If you want to use dash u, that's fine. I, in fact, let's, uh, let's do a little bit of research, shall we? Um, so let's search for this. Let's search for is sort dash u POSIX compliant. Uh, what is the difference between sort dash u and sort? Hey, look at that. It's the first hit on Stack Exchange. Uh, sort pipe unique existed before sort dash u. Okay, that's what I was saying. And is compatible with a wider range of systems. Yeah, that's that's a that's a fancy way to say it's positive. But I got it right. I got it like dead on. Although almost all modern systems do support dash u, uh, it's POSIX. It's not POSIX. It's mostly a throwback to the days when sort dash u didn't exist, and people and people don't tend to change their methods if they that would be me. <laughs> so there you have it. Okay. So now you know both ways. You can pick. You can be new and cool and hot and young and use you know sort dash u and call it a day, or you can pipe to unique. Either way, uh, that's that's how you do it. Okay. Now it might be that you want it to be unique, but you also want to count it. And I doubt you can do this with sort, which might be a reason for you to learn unique instead, because I don't, let's see, I don't know. Okay. I'm going to show you how to do it first. All right. So actually let's, let's put this in our, our notes here. Um, let's see, how do I, how do I sort the lines of output? I haven't determined which lines are unique in the output. Uh, how do I count the number of unique, uh, lines of output? Um, uh, what is lexicographical, uh, lexical sorting, um, uh, why, why is underscore considered a letter? Anyway, we put some of those things in there. Um, here we go. How do I count the lines of unique output? And there's somebody out there who already knows this, I'm sure. And they're really smart. And they've got experience doing this. So sort dash unique, right? Well, if you add, I think it's dash C. There you go. Then you get your line numbers, right? And you see where this can go? This is really fun. In fact, I use this with disk usage all the time. When you're trying to find the things that are taking up all your disk space on your machine, you, sometimes that number in the front is really useful. But now you want to resort it again. And so then you use this whole pipeline idea. And we go up. Oh, by the way, every time I go up, I'm just uh, doing control C and I'm pushing K to go up. You can push arrows if you want. So when you go here, then you can add on to the end of this another pipe. And then you can sort that one. Oh my God. It's amazing, isn't it? And if you wanted, if you want those numbers to be at the top, you can actually add another thing to sort. You can sort dash. R, I think for reverse there. So we're just passing them all off. So now we see, we can see which things occur in the file more than others. Pretty cool, huh? And I mean, this is just the number. This is just the counted numbers of items in there, right? Uh, and and then by the way, then you could you can combine that with grep and say, okay, I want everything that has that is not, you know, one. I want everything that doesn't start with a one. Now you haven't learned this yet, but you kind of have because grep, right? Now let's see, we're going to grep. What are we going to grep? We're going to grep for everything that starts with a two. So grep dash E, uh, exclaiming this two. Actually, this isn't going to work. Why? Because there's spaces there. All right. So that didn't work. So let's use, let's use something else that we already know. All right. So we want to say it should have one or more spaces in front. So space, and we'll put a star. That means zero or more spaces. Okay. So so this is a really good example of how you can kind of build up a command. It's very, very normal. It's not very efficient, right? And what we're going to see later on in a few weeks, we're going to see how you can take that line that we just wrote, copy and paste it, put it into a file, and boom, you have a script. In fact, you want to do it right now? Let me just give you a spoiler, a preview of how we're going to do this. All right, so I take this exact line and and uh, I'm going to control C. You don't know TMUX yet, so we're going to put it in a, in a program. We're going to call the program uh, uh, two of, how about that, right? So let's actually touch the file 
And then we're schmod plus x. You don't know that yet, but you will soon. Two of. Yep. And and then I'm going to edit this with vi. Uh, should we use ed? Should we use ed? I mean, what, you want to see me fail? No, I'm using vi. It'll take forever. We're going to learn ed now. But right now we're going to learn it together. I have to learn it every year. I have to relearn it. So I'm pasting that with my mouse. All right. So now we have a program. How do I run the program? Temp two of. Now every time I run it, I get two of. Uh, yeah, there you go. So so every time I run it, I get the same thing. I don't have to go up and, and do my thing, right? Okay. So that's a spoil. We're going to, in the in the future, we're, what I'm trying to show you is that after you go through this effort to laboriously come up with this filter, you know, you, you kind of organic. This is very much the Unix workflow when working with files and stuff like that is that in fact so much so that some programmers will forget to optimize the code later so they'll take this extremely inefficient but works you know command line here they'll put it in a file with a bunch of others and they'll call it a day and submit that into production because they they've worked out how to get exactly what they want without really thinking of it in terms of production uh, deployment as an application, and so the, <laughs> I'm just going to put a little warning out there, a caveat that that you know this is not good enough, right? There are better ways to do this in shell. In fact, you can do this entire thing uh, without calling all of these extra tiny little programs, right? You can do it with one bash loop, and when we get to bash programming, I'll show you how to do that. So. Just know that, in fact, you'll, I promise you right now that if you go look around, you will see code out there that does not have, you know, it has, it's, it's just in its very raw pipeline state like we just saw right here, right? So, so there you go. Um, I mean, yeah, that, that is, uh, that is, 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 is one way to do it. Now, I think we've covered that particular topic, uh, more than more than we have time for we have 17 minutes left of this hour we're only going to go for two hours so how do i count the number of unique lines of output uh and how do i edit a file from the terminal okay well we counted the out well, how do i edit a file from the terminal and how do i change the contents of line from the command line so we're, we're going to get to these uh you can't you can use wc yep you can use wc uh wc is an, it's worth mentioning let's go ahead and mention it so uh, if you want to count the number of lines of a file, you would use WC temp two of, right? But the reason I didn't mention WC is because that's not what we're doing. What we're doing here is, uh, you know, we are, watch, I'll show you. So, um, if, if you wanted, you could do grep and then pass it to WC. So you could do this. So you could say, but see, we, we have a summary of everything that has two or more lines in it, right? So that's not quite the same as WC, but it's worth mentioning. Uh, so what WC does is it counts the number of lines, uh, characters, and bytes in the file. You don't know what a byte is yet, but we're going to talk about it. A byte is 8 bits. Uh, it's more or less a character. So this, by default, if you do WC, um, you can go ahead and try that. So let's let's actually document that in our notes since somebody brought it up. Uh, number of unique lines of output. Uh, how let's see how how do I count uh, lines, uh, characters, and by bytes of a file? Okay, uh, this is useful though. I mean, it is very useful, so it's worth mentioning. Uh, and this is probably the right time to mention it, even though I was going to skip it. So if you just want the number of lines, so you could say wc-l temp foo, and that'll say we have exactly 12 lines of foo, right? If you wanted to see all the lines with a in them, with that, you could do sort-c. There's just an infinite number of options. If you want to do it kind of a long way, you could do this. You could say, uh, you could say grep uh, 5, we'll say, from temp foo. Right, so that gives us two lines, and then if you didn't know how many there were, you could pass that to WC dash L, and you'd see that there were two lines in there. Okay, or you could do this. <laughs> you could say, you could say sort uh, temp foo, uh, and then you could say uh, unique uh, dash C, and you would see that those there's two of those in there, right? And then you could grep five, 
and then you get there's two. <laughs> there's just there's just a lot of possibilities here, people. So so it's good to know them all, and I'm glad somebody mentioned WC as well. All right, let's go back to uh, to to this main thing. How do I edit a file from the terminal? Uh, we're about to enter, as I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, the most controversial, fought over thing in all of Unix dumb, Unix and Linux dumb. And, and I just have to be very careful how we do this. Let me, let me tell you what I think. Okay. So first of all, let's just do a search. What is the standard Unix editor? Okay. And I'm hitting enter. And the first hit is ed. You know why? Because it is. <laughs> notepad. No, it's not notepad. Unix text editor. Ed, and how many, raise your hand if you actually know how to use Ed. I'm not raising my hand because I, I use Ed all the time, but then I forget it. Okay. So let me, get, let me give you a really quick history lesson. I'm going to time myself. Less than three minutes for a history lesson. Okay. So once upon a time, there was, you know, these guys and they decided they wanted to make unix for bell labs and make lots of money and charge three thousand dollars a seat hey look uh look at all the things in my search history go search for this unix operating system all right if we watch this every christmas this has become we we do kind of like a mystery science 3000 uh commentary and we watch the AT&T archives, the creation of the Unix operating system. We we watch this every Christmas. So if you want to wait and watch it with us on Christmas time, you can. It's Dennis Ritchie, by the way, the creator of C, uh, who died the same week as Steve Jobs and nobody knows. Um, anyway, if you want to watch this, this will take you through a lot of things uh, that you are using every day when you're using the Linux terminal. And there's your teletype, like I told you. Uh, all these guys are old farts now. In fact, you can that guy right there, if you search for that, who created grep, how was grev created you can see him in, in, a, in a younger at an older age there he is and he'll tell you about where grep came from and you can kind of get into the, the whole culture of unix and linux which is which is very great geeky you see the re it stands for regular expression yeah and we're, we're actually going to get into this when we get into to but why am i taking you through this historical case right the reason I'm taking you down memory lane is you need to understand that when Unix was created, there was no way to edit using the terminal. I mean, we're talking about people were keying things in. They were just barely past the point where they were loading things in from, uh, you know, crunch cards. And I have some somewhere. I have to go pull them out. But they, they were, you know, typing things in, right? And... Uh, suffice it to say, let me, let me show you something. So when I'm using Ed, when I'm using a VI, here I am using VI and I'm going up and down. What I'm, what I want to remind you of is what is the difference between a terminal application? I'm going to put this in the notes. Uh, uh, what is the difference between, we've talked about this before, but we're going to hit it again. A terminal application and a ter terminal interface and CLI. Uh, we're going to have TUI and a CLI. Anybody want to take a stab at what the difference is? Pause the video and take a stab. What's the difference between a TUI and a CLI? A CLI is this idea of you type something on the command line and it spits something out. Read, evaluate, print loop, right? It prints it on that line and then you get a new line. And there's only just one line displayed of output. Oh, actually, there's there's output is being sent to standard output and standard error, which we covered two weeks ago. And it's showing up on your terminal. But the, the, the short answer is a command line interface does not use cells. Okay. And I'm going to, this, this is a very specific term. So, uh, what is a cell, a terminal, this is going to be weird cell in Unix. I wonder if it's even going to cover it. Uh, console kernel, blah, 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 blah. All right. So. When we're using the difference, we talked about how how terminals uh, came from teletype. We talked about that already, so we're not going to talk about that again. But what I do want to hit, I want to cover this, is that when you're using a terminal user interface application, the program is updating individual squares on the screen. It's no longer functioning like a teletype. 
right? Because now, as soon as you have this, I mean, it's terminal user app interface applications, and this is why I have to tell you the story, right? Because back when Unix was created, there was no such thing. It was, it was still very much like a teletype, everything, that's why we have pipes and grep and, and append and all this other stuff from the command line. Because when Unix was first invented, it was first written in assembly, and it was very, very hard to write. And then actually Dennis Ritchie and the gang invented the C programming language to make a more robust version of Unix. And the first thing they wrote was ed because they needed a way to edit files more easily than this whole let's you know you know append files and modify them from the command line the idea of a terminal user interface hadn't been invented yet and wouldn't be invented for some years to come right in fact uh, a spoiler alert here vi stands for visual mode of x which was a successor of ed and the reason I'm giving you this history lesson and explaining it to you is because if you don't understand Ed, you don't understand the Unix interface because Ed was the basis of everything else. It became the basis of said, it became the basis of VI and Vim and NeoVim and Nano and Emacs and all that jazz, right? All of those things were inspired, Emacs not directly, but they were all inspired by the first and standard Unix editor. And it's it's become kind of a kind of a kind of a chin bear joke to to tell people when they start fighting about editors, some you know boomer will come into the argument and go, well, the only editor anybody ever needs is Ed. In fact, there's actually a really great uh, XKCD on this that I'm gonna go ahead and run you by. It's just, you kind of need to know it if you, so that you're not left out in the lurch, right? If you go to XKCD and you search for uh, editors, you'll see what I mean by the, by the, by the fight, uh, real programmers. So, so we're going to go ahead and read this, uh, nano real programmers use Emacs. Hey, real programmers use Vim. Well, real programmers use Ed. No real programmers use cat. You know what these things are now. So you're cool. You're cool because you now know what you don't know Ed and Vim yet. I mean, you don't know Emacs and Vim, but you know, these other ones. And by the way, you're a real programmer because you just use cat and, and print F. <laughs> By the way, cat is a stupid thing. You can't edit programs with cat. They should have said printf. Uh, real programmers use a magnetized needle and steady hand. Excuse me, but real programmers use butterflies. <laughs> they open their hands and let the delicate wings flap once. The disturbance ripples outward, changing the flow and eddy uh, of the currents in the upper atmosphere, which causes momentary pockets of higher pressure to form which act as a lens that deflects incoming cosmic rays, focusing them to strike the drive platter and flip the desired bit. Assuming you used to have drive platters, we don't have those anymore. We have SSD now. So nice, of course, of course, there's an Emacs command to do that. Oh yeah, good old, good old control X meta C meta butterfly. Damn it, Emacs. All right, so... So as I said, there's like this, this raging, you know, cultural fight about what the best editor is because it's a very personal decision. And, uh, so you do need to know about all of that stuff. Okay. Uh, but as I said, we, we, we've been, we've been, you know, we've been pretty, pretty cool in our editing so far. What do we do? We, we just remember, remember when we just, uh, we just echoed that stuff to the end of the foo file. Remember when we print F that stuff? Yeah, that's, that's some pretty fancy editing right there. Right. But we still don't know how to change the individual lines. Uh, if we wanted to change one line, we'd have to make a new file. Right. And you could do that. You could do that. You could say, I want to take that one line and I want to change it to something else. And we, that transformation of lines is something we're going to cover now. But the reason we're going to cover the ed editor before we do that, before we cover said and all those other great tools is because all of those tools said, said is ed, right? So we need to learn ed first. Now I, this has become a thing for me, uh, outline before. So this is this is going to be a thing for me uh, to do every year because I forget how to use Ed. Now I use the Ed commands and everything else that I do all the time, so I know that. But in terms of like how to actually use the Ed editor, you almost have to do it like once a year. So I actually found last year uh, a Red Hat tutorial about how to use Ed, and we're going to follow this. Okay, so we're going to do this together, and we're all going to learn Ed. And if you're a veteran 
please take a moment to learn Ed and just remember your wonderful roots. The reason we're learning Ed first, and, and you go, it's not a waste of time, I promise, because when you learn Ed first, your use of uh, NeoVim and Vim and all that stuff will be much more powerful because you'll understand some of the more powerful components of it, uh, and you've already understood how to do filters and stuff, right? So your knowledge of those things won't be, it, it, NeoVim won't be VS Code for the terminal anymore. At which you know, or, or Emacs won't be VS Code for the terminal. It will be more substantial because you'll understand where it's coming from. And that's why we're doing it this way. This is my personal take on how to learn editors. Uh, for as well loved as VI command is, the head command uh, that's considered the standard Unix editor. It was very first editor in Unix. And it's available on all Unix systems. Ed, blah, blah, blah. Familiar with said, you already know it. But you haven't learned said yet, which is why we're learning Ed first. So here we go. To get Ed... Uh, to be a little bit more visual, use the P prompt to do thing. So let's actually launch Ed. We're going to follow this tutorial together. Okay, Ed. We're going to run Ed, and we get nothing. Actually, why don't we... Uh-oh. How do, how do I get out? Oh, no. There's big jokes about that, too. Uh, it looks like Q is to get out. So let's clear the screen first, and let's type Ed. We just open up an editor, and it's like, nothing, man. <laughs> There's nothing. It's like, what the hell am I looking at? I don't even know how to get out of here. This is why people joke about egg when they make jokes about exiting Vim. They're actually there's there's long running memes that predate the word meme that, about exiting Vim when they really mean exiting Ed, which is underneath Vim. Uh, they don't really get that, but now you get it. So so when because it doesn't tell you what to do, it's like you just have to sit there and stare and imagine what to do, uh, and there's nothing you know to go look at, right? So there's actually a really fun strong bat on this. Uh, during the break, I'll show you the strong bat on this. There's a really fun, fun strong bat about this. Uh, so anyway, Ed P, remind me to show you. So so let's do let's do P. It's like uh, there's nothing here. I don't know what to show you. So what does P do? P shows you. P is the prompt to create a use the P command to create a prompt. Type the letter P followed by a return. The question mark is the default ed prompt. Oh, hey, look, we have a prompt now. So we typed P, so now we have a prompt. I guess you could, I wonder if I, I wonder if I could use a, like an emoji. You think it's going to let me? It could be this old person, this old grandma. No? Damn. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, uh, it does it followed by the return of the game. To use the P command to create a prompt. Can I, can I do, can I, what is it? Can I do P? No, oh well. I tried. Let's try this. P that. No, nope, doesn't work. P just must turn on the prompt. I don't know. Uh, he mentions VUM. Oh my God. All right. So let's see the question mark. Use the add buffer. So we're going to use the buffer. So the, this is, this is, the thing that's crazy about Ed is that this is a terminal. It's a program that's waiting. It's it looks like a terminal user interface, but it's not because it doesn't po it doesn't point at the different cells. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't know about the cells. All it knows about is to sit around and wait for you to enter something and then spit something out to you. That's it. So it's strictly speaking, it's not a terminal user interface. It's still a command line. It's just a program that's stuck reading input, uh, which is going to become powerful later because we can actually send to its standard input all the commands that we would use. And then we're going to modify it that later. Uh, you can depend on the current buffer with A. Okay. Uh, so what are we going to do here? Let's do A adds two lines. Okay. So let's do A. So A, and I'm going to say, this is something here is something else and then you're supposed to put dot to end which i think is interesting because the dot to end is still part of send mail submission using dot to terminate that's actually part of it yeah it's like okay i did something what did i do well i don't know what is there i can't see it because it saved it inside of its buffer um uh, so we got the dot and now we see, let's see, save the buffer to disk. Uh, we actually don't need to save it to disk. Actually, I already going to teach you how this. So if you do comma colon uh, P, that will print everything in the buffer. So, so comma P will print everything in the buffer. Uh, so, so there you go. 
This gives you everything that's there. And if you want to write that to disk, it's W. This is all going to come back later when we do vim. So if you want to write it to temp uh, slash ed file, right? And now it says it wrote 41 characters or bytes to temp ed file. So we have to do the W every time we want it to be saved, right? So if we change something, uh, we need to do that. So how do we change it though? I don't know. What line are we on, by the way? Okay, that's all covered here. So read an ed file. So if I wanted to, let's actually exit first. So Q to exit. So let's run ed with the file. So you can actually cat the temp ed file. And you see it's there, right? And you could um, do all your rep and stuff. Or let's start ed and point it to the file. So now it's, it's loaded up 41 things. We're going to print it out. It's all in our buffer. And we can do some stuff with it, right? Uh, you can also actually, now let's make sure you do this. You know this. If you want to start up ed and then read in the file, we're learning these on purpose because they're part of vim. R, what does R do? R reads the file, temp ed file. So if you are a vim user and you guessed R because you know vim, the truth is you learned ed first. You just don't know it. So say so you push Q and I, it's not letting me out. Okay, there we go. And, but so how do we actually change the file that's already in existence? Let's keep going here. So there's the command I already told you about how to show it. Let's say, oh, just to see a specific line number, we type the number. Okay, let's do that. So we're going to do the line number. Uh, we're going to open up that file and we're going to say, I want to see line two. Oh, there's line two. Let's say line one. There's line one. Is there a line three? Is there a line zero? No, there's not. Okay, so how do I add lines to it? How do I edit the buffer? So, ed, okay, we, we already have got that. We got that all listed there. To edit file, first load the buffer. We did that. Now we go to line two. So this is where sed comes from. So pay attention. So this command was the first version of s slash. I've showed you that this is supported in Discord, right? This has become so mainstream in the tech world that you can actually change a keyword or a regular expression in the previous post in a Slack in a in a Discord channel by using s slash from the command line. So, and I showed you guys this the other day, but I want you to understand that this is the thing. Uh, let me let me show you what I mean by that. By the way, so um, I'm trying to find a, a public forum where I can show you. Um, let's see here. All right, so I'm going to the general Discord chat, um, which I'm going to make sure I'm not doxing anybody here. Okay, so so here we go. Here's Discord, and I, that's I, I want to show you how perpetual this. I mean, how how much this has impacted modern society. So, uh, Emacs uh, is the best editor. All right, and if I wanted to change that, I can do this: s, s Emacs to Vim slash and you see how it changed it now obviously the people who created this discord function did it wrong they did it wrong <laughs> why did they do it wrong because they didn't support the, the actual s syntax so i want to actually i want to replace the slash with no, with nothing it's not going to do it so it's 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 kind of a thing it doesn't really work it doesn't because if it did it wouldn't have that yeah, there now it's blank, right? So this, uh, what they, tr <laughs> this is so crazy. I wonder if you can actually do this slash uh, them space. No, they didn't do that. They didn't do that. They're just doing a stupid some string thing. But, but you know, it is important that you understand that you actually can do that. And because it was such a common thing for people to type that they would do it, right? So they would do slash vim slash ed right but strictly speaking you're going to see that that's not accurate they tried to make they tried to be cool and make it like ed but number one the people who made discord have no idea how to use ed they probably never use it in their life and it's a noob <laughs> i'm definitely a noob and and so anyways let's do this so let's say uh let's actually change here is something else let's say uh, what line are we on? Two? Is that one or two? Say, let's change something to another thing. So, S, some, other, right? And you can do it without the slash at the end. So, I take that back. I guess it does allow that. But let's try it again. S dot other, some, slash, right? Now, if you do a G, it will be repetitively. So, so let's do that. So, let's say, 
uh, let's look at our whole buffer here. So we have something else and we have something, right? So let's say we wanted to change all the E's. Uh, what line are we on to? Okay, so we want to change all the E's to capital E's. So S E to capital E. And if you just do one, it's not going to get them all, right? It just gets the first one. So let's do that same command again. S E slash capital E slash G. All right. And that is going to get everything. Right. But you can't see it because it didn't get them all. Right. So you see how it changed all those letters and transformed that thing while we were editing it. Now it hasn't saved it to disk. Right. So in order to save it to disk, we need W. And by doing W, it did remember what file I hope that we wrote to and let's actually quit and go check so temp uh ed file and we see the file has been changed uh you love s r e r e grepping and grep r grep ping yes yes good job day loop so so you're getting the you're getting what where this is coming from right uh that is the where we, i wanted to show you this because this is where it came from and we're going to use this in said all the time most people think this comes from said it doesn't it comes from ed Right, so let's actually go down here to target another line. Use a different line number in the search term. So you go to that line, and then you do your your whatever, right? So uh, you see this is like charged, targeting the different lines. Um, I don't think you can target another line at the same time though. Uh, that would be cool. Let's try this. Let's try. Let me try something. Ed temp ed file. Okay, so let's list all other things. It, by the way, if you put numbers in front of those letter, uh, here, you know, it's the same thing. It gives you a range. So if I add more numbers, um, what I want to do though, is I want to make a change to line two again. Uh, let's make them say, we're going to make all the E's into capital E's. All right. Now let's apply that to line one. I want to see if this will work. Uh, no, that just, it doesn't apply it to line one. It just goes to line one. Now, there's no history or any of that jazz because why because it's just a basic interface it's not a terminal command interface if i want to do another re uh, replacement on the other one i have to do the other one right now you can get kind of interesting here so if i i'm actually online too right but i think you can do this i think you can do this i think you can do one s dot e e g i don't know let's try okay and then let's print it oh look at that it did it Okay, so if you put the line number in front, it applies it to those line numbers. Let's change everything in line one and two. And let's put, let's change all the capital E's back to lowercase e's. All right. And then let's let this print everything out. Oh, hey, look, it worked. Now, I really want you to pay attention to that whole line range stuff because when we get into Vim, that is the most powerful way to use Vim. And most people don't know how to do that. They, 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 they just, it's a WYSIWYG thing. And so, so this is powerful. You see how we got that, right? Um, and anyway, let's, let's keep going down in the tutorial. So uh, view the edits you've made so far with the B. We've been doing that. Uh, you can go ahead and write the file out. You can clear the buffer. So if you wanted to start a whole new document, you can just do C. We're not going to do that. And quitting out of ed is either control D, which sends an end of file. Control D sends an end of file character. Okay. Or you can just push Q. Right. Uh, and that's important because what I'm, all those commands that I just did, I want to show you can be done from the command line. Okay. So, so let's do that. So let's quit here. Okay. Whoops. Quit. Okay, here we go. So let's cat temp temp ed, ed file, right? So let's try to make let's do all those convert. Let's do exactly what we did with the ed program, but let's not start up ed interactively. All right. So let's see if we can do that. So how would we even do that? Well, we know about sending stuff to standard input, right? So we could let's try. Do we want to try echo or printf, right? See, I know this is weird. This, this is not something that normally people would do, but we're going to try it. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to create, we're going to load up the file and, and we're going to do some stuff with the file. Okay. And this is going to look really weird. So Ed is going to open up this file, right? Actually, let's not even do that. Let's do, let's do it all from here. Let's do all of these commands passed into pipes into Ed. I don't know if this is going to work, but we're going to try it. So we're going to say, I want to say 
that I want to open the file. So read temp ed file, right? And then run it through ed. Okay, it didn't work. So it says unknown mime type for R ed. Oh, whoops, print F, whoopsie. Okay, so it did it, but then it exited, right? Because end of file. And but it didn't do anything. So let's let's add another command. Let's add a line return. And we want to see the content. So let's add a colon P and a line return. Oh wow, look at that. Okay. And it's like doing what we told it to. So let, let's see if we can actually transform it. So let's say how would we transform it? Well, we what what was the command that we did? We wanted to change line anything between line one and two, and we want to change the lowercase uh ease to uppercase ease uh across the board and there's a line return okay uh did it work i don't know did it work one two s e g okay it did it but it now we have to print out the new changes so so colon p or comma p and we see that oh we've got the new changes right and then and then we need to we don't need to write all those changes right and then we need to uh we need to save our changes back to the disk we want to save our changes back to the disk. Well, we know how to do W. So then we type W back to the end, and that should write it to the file, right? Okay, and now when we cat temp uh, ed file, we get a transformed file, right? Now, obviously, that is a pain in the butt, right? And this is why another tool was invented called SED. And we're going to now get into what SED is. SED is a version of ed essentially that operates on files it's designed to be kind of like a filter and not to really necessarily run but i wanted you to learn ed first because ed came before said people used to edit files if they wanted to script the editing of a file if they wanted to script changes to an existing file they would do this kind of thing they would write programs like this in fact you can do this entire thing watch you can take this entire thing that we just did and put it in a script you could say temp uh ed script or whatever it doesn't even have to be uh you know it doesn't even have to be a thing you could just say here you can actually write those commands so we can say i want to i want to read temp ed file uh i want to uh what do i want to do to it and then I, then I, then I, I want to, uh, write, okay. Then I want to modify, uh, one and two. I mean, we don't, we, we, we you want to do the whole file and there's a command for that, but I don't want to learn it right now. I want to change all the E's, uh, to E's with G, right. And, and I don't want to, I don't necessarily have to write them out. I don't want to necessarily have to see them. I don't, I just want to see what the file is going to be. That is a script. So you could actually do this. You could say, ed and then run it as a script by passing to standard input of ed the script that you just wrote okay uh ed script right and it, it tells you what it did so what i'm trying to tell you is that ed is a scripting language right it's a scripting language too instead of s did i uh oh whoops yes all right so let's do that let's uh let's actually go in there and and do the reverse right so cat cat temp ed file and you'll see that that's all there now let's 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 take our ed script and let's reverse it all right let's reverse it now then now let's try that all right so ed you have to do you have to do here you can't point it to the file because remember that loads it into the buffer we don't want that right we want to run the commands so temp ed script right right we're going to run our ed script and if you want to tell it to shut up, you already know about this, right? We can say that I want to write the output to dev null, right? We don't care. And so what I've just done is I've just written a script that does a conversion of any file without said. Now there, you're going to, there's a very good possibility. You'll be on a system without said. I know that sounds weird, but there are containers that don't have set on them. I mean, even BusyBox has it, but you know, and and stuff like that so let's try that so cat ed file temp ed file all right so there look at that look how pretty that is so we have just transformed a file by writing an ed script right 
I challenge you to find anybody on the internet who will show you how to write an Ed script because it's not a modern thing to do, but it does have value because this is going to show you how other stuff works, right? And what you're going to see these commands, you go, you're going to, somebody opening this file already knows VI is like, damn, are they writing VI commands in a file? I'm like, yes, that's exactly what they're doing because it came from Ed, okay? Um, we're gonna take a five minute break really quick. When we come back, we're gonna actually show you how to use SED, which is the, the, the extension of this. So I'd have to take a quick break. Pause, okay, so we're off to, to the races. We're gonna play with SED. Um, somebody reminded me that Man Ed is another great place to go. We didn't do that. Shame on me. Man Ed, line oriented editor. You can go here and read about it. It also has, if you wanna use Ed with extended regular expressions, you can. You know all about that now because last week we covered it too much you can actually change the prompt etc and uh if you know vim already and you're wondering if you can do the same thing with vim you can okay and and it's actually one of the great ways to initialize a vim session uh that you want to start in a particular place uh or anything like that and so as i said knowing this stuff is valuable information for learning neovim even later if you choose to um but let's, let's go back to the next editor. So we are not going to cover the other editors. That's, that's on the schedule for today. We have 35 minutes. We're going to cover, we're going to be able to go over the editors that exist. But before we go and we start fighting about all the different editors, we're going to go and we're going to use said, all right? So we talked about the difference between a terminal user interface and CLI. Strictly speaking, Ed is not a terminal user interface. No, Ed is a is a command line interface. It's a program that runs that hangs around waiting for you to type in input. That's what we we prove that by passing that file to standard input of Ed, which means that Ed is a command line interface program. Even though when you start it up without passing it off some standard input, it waits around for you to type things in. Okay, so it's not a terminal user application. It's a command line application. Um, so is said. So the next question is, how do I edit a file from the terminal? All right, and let's try that. So um, we, we've talked about editing a file from the terminal uh, in general, but we're gonna, um, we're gonna, actually that's kind of the thing we've been taking. How do I change the contents of a file? Let's see, um, let's see, how, how do I edit a file using the ed, uh, editor we did that one already how do i change content lines of output from the command line so the first this is related right so so said yeah uh, something like that will work that uh, that ed script is probably day loop that ed script is probably going to have to be modified slightly to be compatible with x yeah and and we'll talk about that in a second so let's let's do the said thing first we only have 30 minutes um all right so back here where are we here we are and so here we have our, our script, temp ed script, right? And we have our file, uh, temp foo, right? That we were sorting. Okay. So let's, what if we wanted to, you know, we know how to append, right? And we, we technically we could add stuff to the beginning of it just by using cat, right? And there's, there's lots of things we can do to combine files together to make other files. And, and we could get some pretty interesting pipelines, you know, to do that. But wouldn't it be great if we could just change all of the uppercase Qs into lowercase Qs, right? And that's where sed comes in. So sed uses the exact same commands. In fact, we don't really need to put them in quotes, but we're going to anyway. Let's change all the uppercase Qs to lowercase Qs recurse you know repetitively and let's apply that to the temp foo file and there you go so that is the shortcut for the ed command from the command line and the reason it's got s in front of it is because it's primarily for substitutions right there are other commands to do the similar things you could use awk for this and a bunch of things but sed is is hands down uh the world leader when it comes to this kind of operation um when we get into bash scripting, you'll see that, 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 that forking out to a said process for every single time you do this is actually extremely wasteful and can really slow down your bash scripts and is completely unnecessary. Uh, that's one of my biggest pet peeves. However, it's still very valid and you need to know about it. Now, wouldn't it be great, uh, S stands for our stream editor, I think, yes. 
S is for stream and not substitution, whatever. So, so it's it, Ed, I stand corrected. So the Ed is the S is for substream as like a stream of data a pipeline, right? Now, wouldn't it be great if I could, instead of having it do that, I mean, cause that didn't change our file, right? The file hasn't been changed. Wouldn't it be great if I could change the file in place? Well, all you have to do for that is add dash I. Now, when I do this, I want you, somebody out there is immediately going to say, you can't use dash I in POSIX on old Unix systems. And you can't. In fact, it was actually a student of mine uh, in 2015 who showed me, I was using the equivalent, which is called Perl Pi. So let me show you. You don't know about Perl, but this is where I first learned it. Perl dash I dash E, uh, which is exactly the same. Uh, Q slash Q G uh, temp foo. So if you ever hear about Perl Pi, uh, that's that's where that comes from. And now when we cat temp foo, uh, we get that. Now I don't use Perl Pi anymore. Uh, I still think Perl is more powerful than. Uh, in fact, I think I still have a, a PAE uh, somewhere. Uh, PAE, let's see. Do I have my, my, no, I didn't include in my, my image. Okay. So I, I actually encapsulated a bunch of really common Perl one-liners on the command line. Perl is very, very, very powerful for that. But these days you don't need it. I mean, these days you don't need it. In fact, so, so let's, 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 let's keep going with our said thing, right? So said dash I, we're doing in-place edits now. Now, if you wanted to edit them as a part of a pipeline without overwriting the file, which is extremely dangerous, by the way, right? You, I mean, if you get this wrong, first of all, don't do dash I until you know that that's what you want, because I promise you, your day will not be happy. So, so let's just, let's cat the temp foo file. Let's go the opposite direction again. Let's, let's make all the cues uppercase. So let's do said, uh, S, uh, Q uppercase Q, uh, and we want to do that across the board and temp foo, right? So now they're all uppercase, right? Did it change the file? No, it did not, right? So moral of the story, always check the changes first. And if you really want to be safe, you can write them to temp, uh, to, to, uh, temp new foo, and then you can cat new, uh, temp new foo right and you can see that the changes have been made and you can that way now now I'm, i can tell you now that you know that that's a way to do it without it you can actually pretty sure you can give a, a, a um uh eh, i think you can give a i know a pearl you can i don't know if I said you can do it this is a guess i'm just guessing i'm pretty sure i could be wrong here but i i think you can do dash i dot back and yeah and then if you do slash temp uh, ls temp uh, slash temp slash foo uh, foo star you can see now that you have um, you confirm that it's stream editor okay so as you can see if you add a, a suffix to the end of your dash i if you're afraid of the changes it will make that backup for you it's the same exact thing as what we just did there uh you know, sort of, uh, except for uh, that one doesn't change it, right? You'd have to actually move it. I mean, you could do it like this, right? And you could do move, uh, or you could do uh, copy, or you could you could take a copy of it first and stuff like that, right? I mean, there's you, you know the copy and the move commands. You could figure that out if you want to do them. So, so if you're afraid of the backup, now I I tend to not do that box. I tend to just do the said straight up and test it first to see what it's going to do. And then I'll just apply it. Now, this, 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 I, I hope you can see a little bit how powerful this is. All right. So let's, let's, when we combine these things together using the Unix philosophy of doing one thing well and allowing it to be combined with something else, we start to get some really powerful combinations. For example, um, let's say that I want to copy, uh, let's copy. Uh, temp, let's copy temp foo to temp, uh, bar. Okay. And we want to make 10 of them. Uh, okay. That's not, we have to do a thing like this. We have to do four. You don't know this yet. Four. I in, uh, one, one to 10. Do, uh, copy temp foo to bar. Actually, no, let's have, copy to foo. Foo, uh, all right. You're going to learn that. You don't know that yet, but 
All right, so so now when we last Sletchemp Fu Star, we see all of these things that we got here, right? Uh, you know what's interesting is this, this here is, why is that thing uh, yellow? I don't know why that is. I'm curious to see. Interesting. Oh, it's a dot .back file. That's why it's 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 getting colored special because it's called dot .back. We don't need it anymore, so we can remove that. Temp foo. If we want it, by the way, you guys remember the wild cards, right? This is all the foos that only have one. Here's all the foos that have two. Here's all the foos that have anything at the end. Okay, so those are the wild cards. You guys learned those already, but you know we do that. If you want to learn the well, you want to see all the ones that begin with one. You can put one uh, star. And if you want to learn all the ones that learn, you know, anyway, you, you, you figure, you know, what's up. Um, yeah. And, and there's, when we go through man bash, we'll see a bunch of other stuff out there. Um, so, so what do we got here? Um, people ask about the distro new, welcome to the stream. Uh, you're in the middle of a YouTube video, so I'm kind of going fast here. Um, so, so yes, uh, what do you mean? Okay, you need to just pause right now. We're in the middle of a YouTube uh, video. You can't follow me because I'm a bunch of user. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> I have to deal with people like that all the time in the stream. So YouTube, I'm just letting you know, people have no idea what they're talking about. Uh, enjoy being unemployed. So anyway, let's. Um, we've got we got our we got our our changes. We're gonna make. What I wanted to show you is how to change multiple files all at one time. Okay, can't foo, foo error like this, and so uh, now we could actually cat all those files too. Temp foo. Notice how the lexical sorting of this. Then only did it. Look like if we did them all at once. Wow, look at that. Now let's combine them all. Let's combine those all and let's like sort them. How about that? What? What the hell? Now let's sort them with a dash c and count them. Whoops. Let's do unique uh, dash C and count all those. Uh, and do you see those? Look at those. We get them all. We got we get all the counting going on. But now we're like, oh my god! I want to change all the uppercase Qs to lowercase Qs, all of them, in all of those files. I want to show you this because this is the power of the command line. What I'm about to do, if you were to try to do this using a graphic browser, oh my god. <laughs> or a graphic editor or something or you know like a, the file browser you already probably know what i'm going to do what am i going to do my friends all right so first of all um uh, yeah so um let's do this let's say let's say let's grep all of the all of the cues all of the capital cues out of, of everything in temp let's let's grep them all out Okay, and because we have multiple files, grep will actually put the file name in front. You can tell it not to do that. But so we have a bunch of things there. And it, actually, if you can, you, I think you can do the line number. Is it dash L? That tells you, if you do dash L, it just tells you the files. Is it N for the line number? N's the line number. So N tells you what line number it was on, right? So it's saying, God, we have a lot of capital Q's in there, right? So how can we possibly change all those? Well, we could try to change them all at one time, or we could use our new powerful commands. We could say this, we could say said, uh, said change all the Q's, capital Q's to lowercase Q, and the G, you have to have the G in there. By the way, the G doesn't mean every line. Said applies this rule, this transformation to each line. The G means multiple occurrences on the same line. And you'll remember that from Ed. When we did Ed, that's what it means. The G is actually multiple occurrences on the same line. So if we had two Qs on a line, we don't. But if we did, that would do that. So that's where the G comes from. Now, if we run this like this, you can see that all of the Qs are small. And we're like, okay, it's doing what I want, right? Uh, but uh, G does not mean global. It means global for that line. It does not mean across the entire file. I just want to be really clear on that. Because said is a stream editor, that means it modifies each line. It applies this rule to each line as it goes, right? So, in fact, let's, let, let me show you something. If, if you wanted to, let me, let me show you what I mean by this. So, if I, we can actually transform all of the cues into double cues, <clears throat> all right? And actually, there are no lowercase cues, so we have to do, let's do this. Let's do, let's do big cues into QQ. 
All right, so now we get that, right? Now let's actually do a dash I. What's that gonna do? This will change every single file that has foo star, every single file at once in one command. Yeah. In fact, it happens so quickly, it's a little bit scary, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Isn't that a little, it's so powerful because I just, I just dumped, look what I did. I just transformed every file in that directory uh, for that. G does mean global, but it's only for that line. So, so, so look at that. Look at what we did there with one command. We changed them all. Now, let's go back and get rid of the G. I want to show you. So I'm just going to change the first Q, and the first capital Q to a Q. All right? Let's change the first capital Q to a Q. As, as you can already see what's going to happen. I'm going to test it first, right? And by the way, this is one of the reasons that I don't use dash I dot back, because what's going to do? You see how it only changed the first one, right? So we don't want that, right? We want a G there. That's going to change both of them. And yeah, we can, if you want to play around with user bin, yeah. So, so this is going to change every single file, make a backup of every single file, and let's see what it does. So, slash, slash, to, foo. Now, the problem we have now is that look at this, right? So, this made a backup copy of every single file that was modified. And if you're really, really paranoid, if you're like, I mean, if you've done all the testing, I mean that, you know, you can go and move that file back if you want to do that. So G is for, yeah, every occurrence on each line. Thank you for saying that again. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, the downside of this is that you have to deal with the backup files, right? So I don't like that. I, I don't regularly do a dash I dot back. I, I be really sure about the command I'm going to use by, by doing it first and then grepping it or looking at the output or writing it to a different file or something like that, making sure I'm getting it right. And then I just let her rip without a dot back on there and because I don't want to have to do this I don't want to have to do I'm so afraid of getting this wrong to clean up my backup files that I mean it's 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 just as much danger that I'm going to remove the backup files incorrectly as it is for me to get the dash i command wrong up front so I think it's better to be sure of your dash i command and then just not even bother with the dot back that's my opinion you can do it however you want um so, but now when we do temp foo, I mean, inevitably you'll forget now. See, as I just said, as I just said, what did I just say? Oh, wait. Wow. I thought I, I thought for a second, I blew away all my foo files. Whew. See, I was scared. <laughs> By the way, I could have easily, right? What if I, what if I had not had that back on the end on accident or something, I could have ended up removing all of my foo files. And what if they were actually system files? Guess what? There's no undo. <laughs> There's no undo. There's no undo people. So just, you know, be careful with what you're doing here. Uh, yeah. Anyway. So, um, uh, yeah, you can go with all those kind of things. Numbers like two is going to change the first occurrence of each line. I didn't know if it was going to do, I don't think it does that. Is that a thing? I don't think you can do that. I don't think, are you talking about, I don't think this is true. I don't think you can, can, can do that. Let's change all of the cues. Cat temp food star. I don't think you can do that. Somebody's suggesting you might be able to change the specific occurrence in the line. Uh, by putting something besides the G there. If that's true, that'll be news to me. I've never done it. So let's say we want to do it to the second one. I I, I don't think that's a thing. If that's a thing, I am going to... I Oh my God. I did not know that. I did not know that. Oh, well, we, have to, we have to test that again. Okay, wait, wait, wait. This is super cool. So, so... So let's do this. Let's say, let's add some more cues in here. All right. That, I did not know that. Oh, that didn't work. Because it only changed the second one. <laughs> so, oh, wait, wait, wait. That's infinite. We don't want that. Oh, do we want to, see, you want to see me blow up? Watch. Because, okay, so it only changes the first G. Oh, this is really interesting. Thank you so much for saying that. I did not know that. I did not know that. 
So let's do this. Let's make all the lowercase q's into the capital q's. And transform that. Now, let's change the third one. Uh, let's change the third one. So let's change the third one to a lowercase q. And see if that works. Cat temp foo. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I've been using Set and Pearl for 30 years and I never knew that. I'm telling you, there's always going to be something you're going to learn. And sometimes you learn it in a very embarrassing way in front of everybody else like me. I had no idea. I've been using it all this time and I had no idea all this time. And I had no idea that you could individually change. I don't think that works with other versions of, of, of S slash. By the way, by the way, it's worth noting that what if you wanted to change slashes? So let's, let's actually do something here. If you wanted to, um, let's append something to the end of, uh, of everything. Right. So, uh, let's, um, let's, uh, let's see. How can I do that? We, we want to put a slash, uh, sometimes it's a works. Always a workshop for me, uh, temp slash foo. All right, so let's let's I'm 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 using VI, sorry. Let's do this. I want to show you something else. This is a kind of an edge case, but it's important. So if you have slashes in here and you will, uh, and you want to do something with those slashes, right? You want to change the you want to escape the slashes, we'll say, right? It's a very common use case. So we're gonna say I want the um slashes to become back uh, double slashes and I want as many of them on the line as possible that this is a very common thing and it's not commonly known that you can do this so if you don't want it to be s slash whatever this first character is will be used as the delimiter for the rest of the, uh, the rest of the comparison okay and that that's in Perl and everything else too and so you'll see some people that will use a comma some people will use a colon uh, you know there i you know that kind of thing so that can be very handy when you're dealing with slashes particularly when you're trying to deal with backslashes which are already reserved uh on the command line so when it starts when you start to deal with slashes um uh you have that and you have backslash yes you could also do that so yeah somebody mentioned escaping which you can also do so um, if you wanted to, you could also do said uh, s slash backslash slash with two backslashes g and slash g and but who wants to type that? <laughs> I don't want to type that. I'm never gonna get that right. So I would rather type this. Replace the slash with two slashes and be done with it. All right, there we go. So. So, so that said, that said in a nutshell, you learn said, there's so many things. So the last thing about said to show you is you can actually have two transformations. Okay. So if, if it's, if it doesn't quite feel, I mean, I see this all the time. I'll see people doing this all the time and it's like such a waste. They'll say, okay, I want to change all the cues to lower taste cue, right? And then they'll have another command or, or they'll, 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 uh, well, you can't do that in place, right? So they'll do this. They'll do, uh, uh, you know, they'll do another set here and then they'll do another transformation to change, like, I don't know, letter A to capital A, right? And that is, oops, that is a waste of time. That is a waste of time because that exact code can be written like this instead uh s slash a slash a like that and get rid of the extra pipe and and that will also work with dash i that other thing won't that other thing we just did where it pipes to the other thing that's two transformations and you'd have to do you can't pipe one of them to the other one right so you'd have to do two separate set commands it's better to just do set dash i and then have the two transformations on the same on the same line like this now, sometimes you can uh, make a complicated regular expression that will be ranged uh, and it will change like the first thing. And in fact, let's do one of those just for fun. So if it, let's say you want to change, um, 
the first occurrence of any number into and put it you want to put a number sign in front of the number all right so let's do that so said we want to change uh, we want to change anything that's a number. So we could do zero through nine just to do a basic one. You can do the other, uh, fancy ones if you want. And, and then we want to change that with, um, uh, we want that same exact number. It's going to be different every time, but we want that same exact number. This is the first time we've used a grouping, which we haven't used before. And groupings don't really make sense in searches, but they make definitely just make sense in substitutions. So we say, I want that one, right? And I actually don't remember the syntax for this. So this instead, I know it in Perl. So we're going to try the Perl syntax and see if it works. Uh, but backslash one, this is, I, I, I don't know if this is going to work. This is going to be very interesting. Um, temp, we're not transforming anything. So is it, is it not, is it not one? What is it? How do you how do you do said groupings? I the Perl that'll work. Yeah, I don't I don't know said for, for groupings. I haven't done it that much. I use it in Perl. Does anybody know? Normally it would be backslash one, and backslash one refers to this grouping. Do I have to do dash capital E? I do. Oh wait, that that uh, interesting, interesting. Wait, what? Wait, 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 wait a second. That was it. I forgot the dash E. Yeah. Okay, so I got burned by basic irregular expressions again. Make sure you add dash capital E, my friends. We talked about that at length last week. Dash capital E says use POSIX, which means that it's the same as Perl-ish, more or less. And that, I am so glad I, I, I caught that. So... So as you can see, it now says number five, number four, whatever, right? And now I'm ready to make the transformation. So I can do dash I, I can do dash I E, I think, uh, and make that transformation. Nope. It has to be its own switch apparently because I has a dot back on the end of it. So we'll do it like that. And, uh, cat temp foo. And we see that my numbers now have hashtags in front of them. Okay. That is a, a region, right? Uh, there are the groupings. If you have more than one grouping, zero is all of them. One is the first one in order. If I had one, in, if I had a thing inside of here, it would be, it, it kind of, you have to just experiment with it, right? Because it's the inner, the first thing to match, which is the outermost parentheses grouping is going to be number one. And then as it goes more precisely, I believe it gets to the other ones, two, three, four, something like that. So like if you had, so in this case, like if we wanted to match, if we wanted to match whatever the first character was, so like a, a character here, and you know, then we, we wanted to see what that, that was. And we wanted to replace, uh, we wanted to keep this character here. Uh, and we wanted all of them to be grouped. So now we have three groupings, two inner groupings and one outer grouping. And I believe the outer grouping is one. So let's try that. Um, let's just see what we get. So uh, do, 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 do. we want to transform one. Let's see. Oh, so okay. So one is the outer grouping, right? Two is just this sign so that's this one right here and three is this one and three is the number so if we wanted to transform uh this back to having not having numbers we could use dash three and then we could add a dash i here and we we would have our we'd have our our file all right um, okay, and that that is all for that. We we need to move on. We only have eight or eight to ten minutes left to cover the rest for today. Uh, play around with said. You're going to have so much fun with said and Ed, um, and that brings us to the next, you know, story uh, chapter in our story. Okay, so so the Ed editor was the first editor made by humans uh, to edit text files on a computer. True story, and and you now know how to use it. Right. And you know how it, it became part of said. Um, but the next step is so we learned how to change contents of a pipeline. We learned how to change the file in place. And um, 
and, and now we're going to talk about terminal editors and which terminal you should use and why. Now, we are not going to practice using a terminal besides Ed today, but we're going to have this debate with at the end of the day, and then you guys can continue the debate in Discord for this week if you want to, okay? But I have to justify my conclusions about teaching you Vim and VI and Ed and Nano and all that stuff in the way that we we're going to do it. So first of all, what are the editors that are out there? So um, and I'm just going to give them to you right now. So you know what terminals are available for Unix. I'm just going to put them out here. So there is Ed, right? There's X. Uh, there and X. This I'm going to put a slash here because X is VI. Okay. Uh, there's uh, Vim. There's NeoVim. Uh, there's Nano. And there's Emacs. And there's actually Pico and Joe. And I used Joe for a long time. Uh, there's a bunch of other ones that are like less known. All right. Um, and, and, and there's, I've never even heard of Helix. I don't know what the hell that is. Let me tell you how this works. Okay. So first of all, let's start with X and V, as a Twitch streamer once called it when he had to use it on, on AIX, which is IBM's Unix. Uh, he's like, yeah, they're using this weird editor called V because uh, he'd only know Vim. He didn't know that, that, that Vim stands for improved VI. Um, X is improved ed. Okay. So X is ed. Now, you can actually play around with this right now. I'm not going to play around with it too much, but if you want to, all those commands that we just did, you should be able to do them all using X. Entering X mode, type visual to go to normal mode. So as it turns out, X and VI are the same program in 2023. They were as of probably 1986, I'm going to say, five maybe. So, so what does this mean? So instead of getting your other stuff, you get this colon prompt. Right. So if you play around with X, you'll see very quickly that it's very similar to Ed. It was designed entirely to be compatible with Ed. And it has all the same commands that we just did. So temp foo, right? Okay, we read it in and you can do P to print them out. And like, oh hey, there's nothing there. Uh oh, that's interesting. All right, so oh, that's interesting. It looks like it doesn't have the same commands. I thought it might have, it doesn't, did I change the commands there? Anyway, it's, it's X is Ed. It's, it's not, it's not, I think I might've messed up my file. Let me check. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Four, three, five. Yeah. Okay. Oh, actually it was doing what it was supposed to do. Anyway. So you can do X temp foo. All right. And let's actually, um, practice our commands again I'm, I'm going to see if that works that's interesting because that only shows you the last line so that's a, that's different than ed isn't it interesting okay so how many lines are there so let's do one to like 10 p all right so that gives us all our lines but as you can see the commands are similar right let's i want to go to uh i know but you don't know about that yet the percent doesn't work <laughs> You don't know about it yet. Actually, let's try this. Yeah, I don't think it works. So somebody who knows VI is already using percent, right? Because that's a VI edition. It's actually an X edition. Uh, and I don't think... Oh, it is. Look at that. I learned something today. I learned something today. The percent is an ed command. The percent command is the same as using every single line. But the percent is supported by modern ed. Interesting. Interesting. See, I learned something else today. So that's good. That's good. That next time I teach it, I'll start with percent then. So percent says, hey, every single line in the entire buffer, right? And by the way, you can use that to make those subs. Remember all that stuff we were doing uh, through said? You can do it from here using the percent. So you can do, and we're in ed now, not X, even though they're the same ish. And you do this, you say, say, I want to change all those cues. Actually, no, let's change the third Q. Let's change the third Q to a capital Q. And I want to do it on every line in the entire buffer. Enter. Okay, now let's actually print uh, everything. 
so let's print everything uh so comma p or actually this p should actually also print it all and you can see that it changed the q uh, at that line right uh ed is x in compat mode i don't it might be i don't know but the point is is that ed and x are the same thing essentially okay so we're going to do q here the difference is is that x is also has a visual mode and when you use x in visual mode it's called vi visual mode of x and i guarantee you you're going to be in vi at some point and you're accidentally going to load up x mode and you're going to be like oh my god what do i do and the thing you do is you activate visual mode so so if you do x let's try it again x temp foo uh x is symlink to vi most of them are most of them are remember most of most programs that's the same file in fact uh until Vim came along, in order to set configuration changes for your VI session, you save them to a file called .xrc. And anybody that's coming to the world like, well, why is it dot, why is there no .virc? There has never ever been a .virc. There is a .xrc and there's a .vimrc, but there has never been an xrc because x and vi are the same program. And x is an is an is an is an improvement on ed. You see where this is going? This is why I think you should learn the whole tool chain because then you know what you're dealing with. And not to mention the fact that all the most powerful commands, somebody, somebody will come along and tell you how awesome SED is, and they won't even know that everything you can do in SED is built into any Vim session they've ever used. And then they'll go on NeoVim and download some shitty Lua plugin to do the same thing they could have done with, a, with an X command. I've seen that done before. I've seen people do that. Like, oh my God, visual mode and Neomax doing blah, blah, blah. It's like so fucking awesome. I was like, you know what? You could have done that entire thing using the same thing that would have fed your knowledge of how to do said filtering instead. No, but you chose to use a stupid extension to the editor that was unnecessary. And I'm, that's all I'm going to say about that. All right. So I'm passionate if you had to have it today. <laughs> oh, okay, so so anyway, so you have this X mode, right? And we have percent, which we just learned is, is now is, is a valid ed command as well. Uh, the original is comma, which is like zero to zero, but this tends to work. So we're going to print out everything. But watch what happens when you're running X. If you do X and you type visual or VI, right? Oh, look at this. Now you get visual mode and you can navigate up and down and you have actual VI. There you go right and you don't know about vi yet we're gonna learn that next week but but if you want to go back to x mode colon x or no vi have no visual i've never done this before <laughs> how do you disable visual mode how do you, I, i've never done it does anybody know uh, how do i go back to i've done it on accident a million times how do i go back to x mode is anybody is it is it Q? No, I damn it. There's gotta be a way to go back to oh it's normal mode. Here, wait. Here. Um uh, I wanna see. I I have to know this. I have to know this. I know it's not relevant to today's session, but I really wanna know. It kind of is. We're gonna learn all this stuff next week, this VI stuff, but I I have to know. I'm so fast. I'm so curious. No, I don't want a macro. Come on, Rob. Don't be a dork. How do I change to X mode from visual mode in VI? Q in normal mode? Are you sure? Doesn't Q exit you? I mean, I'll try it. VI. Oh, it's it's capital Q. No, I'm recording a macro. I'm not recording. Are you telling me that? I'm maybe I overtook my macro starting in Vim. Oh no, it is. It's shift capital Q. You're right. Lowercase Q is start a macro. What? That's why I... Oh my god. That is exactly why I'm always getting into XWorld on accident. 
every time in every time in VI, oh my god, I just I this is a revelation to me. How many times have I been doing this and I forgot to do colon Q to save something and I pressed the wrong thing and I ended up pressing shift Q and I launched myself into X mode. That is so interesting. I have no, that is, that is how I have been screwing up my visual session. All of these, all of these years. <laughs> That's what's been happening. I've been, I have, I've been like, blah, 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 and I go, I go to save because I save all the time, right? Colon W and I go to quit and I quit wrong. And instead of doing colon Q or something, I do shift Q and I'm like, oh shit. And then you're going to be, <laughs> well, I'm not the only one who learned that today, apparently, according to the chat. So maybe somebody out there on YouTube land has just learned something too. So if you want to actually go back to X mode, shift Q gets you back here. And then you can do, you can, you know, do all of the sometimes believe it or not x is nice so if you don't want to have to type colon before all of your commands in vi mode maybe you want to execute like multiple transitions at once without dumping out to said you know what i'm saying that I, i'm going to start using x mode more i am now that i especially i know this so now i can just do this i can just say uh i can say you know dollar uh sq to q i'm gonna change the third one right the third one and oopsie can i go oh damn i say percent wait s slash q wait why do you mean i didn't find a q what, what did i do wrong oh wait that was interesting let me try that again okay so to, to do commands in vi we don't know this yet but you put a call in front right so in VI mode, you just type, start typing colon, and you can do the same thing. So Q, Q, 3. How is it not finding it? How is it not finding it? What am I doing wrong? Uh, I wonder if I have to put this thing here. Q, Q, G, enter. That did it. X gonna give it to you. Um, all right, and we're not we're not we're just saving. Okay, so anyway, so that that is the first editor to look at. So, Ed and X, right? So the way I think you should learn is you should learn Ed first. You should learn Sed next, and then.